Asleep and it's just on an auto play. Either way, thank you for hitting subscribe and like. Uh, in episode 10, we're doing the practical application of the advanced kicking and the advanced hand techniques that we've done in the previous episodes from 8 and 9. But of course, we have to warm up the body, so we're going to start nice and easy. You're just going to lock your wrist together, warm up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Other way, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 2, 2, 1. We're speeding everything up for you so you don't get bored. Elbows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Other way, sir. Excellent job. Shoulders in big circles. And just like in every other episode, if you need to do the exercises more, please feel free to do so. Listen to your body. Hey, twist your body side to side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hips in big circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other way. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And roll those knees real fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the other way. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, roll that ankle out, down like you're hitchhiking. Just kidding, kids. I don't even think that's a thing anymore. Here, roll the other way. Ask your parents about it. And then right to the other ankle, same thing. Rolling it. And rolling it the other way. Sure. All right, time for everyone's favorite. We're just going to do 10 jumping jacks, sir. Get up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six right jumps. So now we're going to do what I call Nordic jumping jacks. I named it off of that uh, machine that your parents have hidden under their bed. So your legs are going to go forward and backward as you're doing your jumping jacks. Get them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent job. Last set of jumping jacks I call break dance jacks because. As a product of the 80s, we did lots of break dancing. Your legs are going to cross, uncross, and cross, and uncross with a little bit of side to side motion makes you look good. Just dance. Are ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! That's how you did break dance, jacks. All right, so from here, just going to do a couple of squats. I will just do five easy ones. Make sure as you're squatting down, you're hitting that 90 degree angle, really engaging your hamstrings. Ready? Go. One, Two, three, four, five. Nice right, job. So now this is the advanced video. So now we're just going to add what they call plyometric squat, which is a super fancy word for jump squats. Yes, sir. Still only five. We're working on more explosive energy, fast twitch, muscle fiber, all the good things that you want to have as a martial artist. Ready to go. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, sir. And get to your heights. <laughs> we will pick our uh, right leg in front. We're just going to lunge five times. Go. So touching the ground is okay with those lunges. Just don't bang your knee off the ground and injure yourself. Same thing on the other leg. Yes, sir. One, two, three. Body stay straight. Four, five. Good. From here, we're going to open our feet about shoulder width apart. We're just going to do 10 easy windmills, keeping your body straight, reaching across, touching the outside of your foot, and then same thing on the other side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was too easy. So what you're going to do instead is take your toes to the outside, heels to the outside, body straight, and same thing. Nine, ten, eleven. We almost got a little lady in the tramp move going on. Good. From here, you're just going to leave those legs there, crossing your arms, elbows down to the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. Head over to one side. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side again. Hana, do, set, net, dasa, yasa, yildo, yildo. All you are going to go back to the middle, open legs as far as you're comfortable with. From here, you can leave your chest up. You're just going to walk your hips forward, stretching out the hip flexors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you're going to push back a little bit, and then you're going to go all the way down so your knees touch the floor. You're going to bring the bottoms of your feet for an inverted butterfly stretch. The goal here is to keep your hips on the ground, feet touching, and feet touch the ground if you can. And if you can, you're a little bit better than me. <laughs> 
Nine, 10, all right, so from here, you're gonna leave your legs in that position. You're just gonna push back, sitting on the tops of your feet. The goal is here, because we're doing more advanced kicking with some spins and turns, to really make sure you're stretching out your hips. We'll take that right leg straight out to the side, almost like a back plank side kick position with the foot tucked underneath. So we're gonna just continue to push that heel as far out as you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From here, you're gonna drive your hips forward and front down to the ground. One, two, three. Oh, it's very interesting. I heard the word advanced. I'm not it's really worried, but um, carry on, gentlemen, carry on. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Push it back. So from here, you're forward. You're gonna leave that knee on the ground, bend that leg back, have a seat back on top of those feet, stretch out the shins and hips. And then same thing on the other side of the leg out. Sir. Push it as far as you can, like salt and pepper said. One, two, three, four. And wrap the back of the day. Five, six, seven, eight. Hips forward again. Sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're gonna touch that knee down, bring the bottom of the foot back in, back to that same position. Obviously, for video sake, we're not going into full time. But if you can hold each of those stretches for about 15 seconds, you'll get much more out of it. You're just going to take your knees and bring them in together. Yes, sir. And have a seat like a Tom Cruise a Samurai movie. You're just going to rock back as far as you're comfortable with. Stitch at your shins and legs. When I was younger, I could lay down and do this. Now I'm afraid I'd get stuck. Leave one of those life alert braces. Now you're gonna roll up onto the balls of your feet, stretch out the arches of your feet, your calf muscles. From here, you're gonna leave both hands flat on the ground, and you're just gonna stand up, stretch out those hamstrings and more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. Excellent job. It's hot today. All right, so we're gonna quickly review some of the stuff we did in the beginning and intermediate videos. Uh, once Master Hole is ready and looking good. I look great, sir. Fantastic. Spicy tree! So remember, early on, we practiced sliding forward and backwards, so he's going to do that. Master Hole is going to slide two times forward, ha! and then two times back. Ha! Ooh, same thing, ready to go. Ha! Get him! Notice how when he's sliding, his weight is even, knees are bent, sitting low, ready to explode either forward or backwards to attack, counter attack, or get out of the way. One last one, get him! worked on angles. Angles are very important to avoid getting hit. On this one, Master Hoyle is going to slide back towards his left, towards that left leg. Get him. Ha! Creating a little bit of space, changing the angle, making it easier for him to counterattack if someone were attacking him. Get him. Ha! And get him. Ha! And switch me. Ha! Same thing, so he's going to slide a little bit towards me. Get him. Ha! Excellent job, sir. Get him. Ha! Okay, that's the one, so in case someone tries to hit him, ha! And so with those angles, it's very important. The taller the fighter or the taller the height difference between you and the person, the bigger the angle needs to be. So if Master Hoyle is the same height as me, angles aren't so important. But because we're a little bit different height, if he slides at a little bit of an angle, he'll be able to make that contact. If he was shorter, he would need more angle off to the side to be able to make that contact. So depending on your height and the partner that you have, that will all change all the time. Yes, sir. All right, so now we're going to go back to the same aim, spot and stands. After that slide back, we have that kick involved. So Master Hoyle slid back at that angle, fired that kick attack from the last video. Anytime you're doing multiple moves, two moves is always going to be slower than three, and two move, one move will always be faster than two. I said that wrong. <laughs> so on that slide out of the way, Master Hoyle sliding out of the way, if I was here for him, I'm gonna kick, he's sliding out of the way, making contact. If I was a faster opponent on that same slide, as soon as he moves, I could get my foot down and slide out of the way. So to take it from two moves to one move, he's gonna do what we call a 45 degree right now sink with a back leg. So as his body's sliding out of the way at the same time, he's kicking and making contact, making it a little bit quicker move. Be mindful of your ankles and the floor that you're training on, that way you stay safe. So without me in the way, it'll look like this. Get him! His body's moving at the same time as he's counterattacking. Get him! Try one on the other side, sir. Same thing. Get him. Ooh, slide. Ah. Everything's got to be ambidextrous. Get him. Slide. Ah. Ooh, sir. So with Master Hoyle, we're talking about height. 
Uh, distance is everything. Doesn't matter if it's self-defense, sparring, uh, in the streets. So I've got some uh, visual aids for you. Ooh, yes, sir. So if you think it messes with the please. With these visual aids, what we're doing is we're drawing essentially concentric rings on the ground. So it's marking off the self-defense. So a master one in the middle of that square. If I'm at the edge of this ring, this is about where he can hit me with his right hand without having to take any extra moves. So as soon as I enter this ring, he knows he can make contact and score points. If I was outside of that ring and had another ring, he would have to do a stepping kick or two steps or something a little bit fancier. The next ring we got will be a little bit smaller. So inside this ring, this is where his hand techniques come involved. So again, if I'm on the red ring, he's kicking, he can make contact. If I come in on that green circle, now he knows he can engage with his hands, elbows, different stuff. You take one of those uh, you're punching through the body, not the head, but as far as self-defense goes, the rings work the same way. If it was a street self-defense and I came into a tap master, Hoyle, as soon as I brought in my arms, so if I was here and I come in to grab him, he's blocking, I'm inside that green screen, he knows he can strike, elbow, everything else. And then of course, the last ring, this is where you don't really want anybody in, this is your personal space. So obviously these rings aren't to scale, but having that visual in your head and knowing where you can hit someone on the outside, knowing when you can use your hands, or when you're inside that personal space where it's kind of an all whole personal space! Memorize could save your life. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Check it. Come in. Come to die. Don't forget hit that like button. And join us for episode 11 when we talk about the different styles of training from old school to new school. You don't need a fancy gym at home, but you just need to have that will to train and survive. Yes, sir. And like, subscribe, and notify. <laughs>